Gotta watch out when Becky's got a red boots on. <laughs> 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 Tommy Stark. Good morning, good morning. Good morning. I am Stephanie Stewart, a practitioner and ministerial student, and I am delighted to welcome you today to Center for Spiritual Living in Greater Dayton. Uh, if it's your first time with us, thank you for sharing your morning with us. A uh, very special welcome to you. Um, if you would take a minute to fill out the tear-off strip that is on your bulletin, we would really appreciate that. You can put it in the tithing basket or take it over to the Welcome Center. We just want to send you a thank you for spending time with us today. Um, Lana Mayhew will be giving our reading and invocation this morning. Our vigil holder is Lenza Smith. And Christina Frasher and her son Colin will offer our inter interfaith candle lighting. This candle lighting reminds us of the many sources of wisdom and truth available to us from the world's religious traditions. Today is Family Sunday. Yay. Yay. <laughs> so we're glad to have our kids in service with us today. And, um, that's it for me. Now we're going to have some special music. We light the first candle in honor of Hinduism. One should not be happy or distressed over desirables and undesirables, knowing that such feelings are just created by the mind. We light the next candle in honor of Buddhism. We are shaped by our thoughts. We become what we think. When the mind is pure, joy follows like a shadow that never leaves. We light the next candle in honor of Sikhism. The one plant should be sown and another be produced cannot happen. Whatever seed is sown, a plant of that kind even comes forth. We light the next candle in honor of Christianity. For the Spirit of God gave us does not make us timid, but gives us power, love, and self-discipline. We light the next candle in honor of Islam. Yesterday I was so clever I wanted to change the world. Today I am wise, so I changed myself. We light the next candle in honor of Taoism. Mastering others is strength. Mastering yourself is true power. We light the final candle in honor of new thought. Prepare yourself to receive the best life has to offer. is from Ernest Holmes. Even as what we did yesterday set the law of life in motion to create what we are doing today. So what we are doing today sets the same law in motion to create what will happen to us tomorrow. What we did yesterday is carried over in today only because we give our consent to it. What we are thinking and doing today can create the kind of tomorrow we wish to experience if we will change our outlook on life. But since today is the only day in which we live and yesterday has forever passed, the change that we need to make within ourselves must be made today. So if you can just take this within your own soul for a few moments of contemplation. So I'm knowing that right where we are, God is this infinite power, this power that is with us, as us, and through us every day that we are walking, talking, and breathing. We are imbued with this power. It is woven into our tapestry of our own soul. There is absolutely no way to be separate from God. And so I know that that same power is in this sanctuary, in this moment, orchestrating absolutely everything that happens today and every day. And so I know that our band has divine order and divine right action with it and through it. 
And I know that for Stephanie Stewart today, that divine guidance and wisdom are pouring through her and so that we can hear all that needs to be heard to touch her own soul. And so I know that the Children's Church and every single thing that is with us today, it is absolutely blessed. And I give such thanks for this. Thank you, thank you, thank you, God. And together we say, and so it is. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So, here at Center for Spiritual Living, Greater Dayton, we are a center of prayer. And so, before I begin with my talk, I would like to recognize, praise, lift up two of our sibling centers. So please join with me in praying for Center for Spiritual Living Detroit and Center for Spiritual Living Louisville, a couple of neighbors that are looking for new buildings. So if you'll join me now in a moment of consciousness. Here now in this place, this place of deep love, of peace, I know that God is. God is all around us and within us, in this building, outside of this building. God simply is. We are a part of that, and it is all of us. It is abundance. It is perfection. And so what I know for CSL Detroit and CSL Louisville is that the home that they seek is waiting for them now. Everything that they may need, whether it is finances or ideas or just the right people, it flows to them now. Nothing is kept from them. God is all abundance and all freedom. And I see now that their home is perfect for each of them. It is a blessing, and they grow in blessing their communities. And I am grateful. I am grateful for a new home for CSL Detroit, and I am grateful for a new home for CSL Louisville. I am grateful for everything that they are in their communities, in the CSL community, and in this world. And so I release this, I release this out into a universe that only says yes to us. And we say together, and so it is. <clears throat> so, what we think about, and give our attention to, and wrap our emotions up in, that becomes a condition in our life. If I had to point out the most basic principle we teach. The one thing that Carol Hughesman and I put into every piece of curriculum for our kids, the first thing we learn when we take foundations or beyond limits, the one principle that seems to make its way into every Sunday talk, no matter who is up here, that's it. What we think about, what we pay attention to, what we give our emotion to, that becomes the conditions in our lives. Now I know that sometimes that's scary for people. We have a lot of people that come here that learn that and then leave. <laughs> Most of them come back because you can't unlearn it. What do you mean I'm responsible? I get it. But I've always found that incredibly empowering. I may not have control over everything that happens to me, but I have control of everything that happens through me. Now hear that difference, please. Sometimes things happen to us. We cannot do anything about what may befall us. But we can choose who we will be on the other side of it. I volunteered and worked in hospice for six years, and I never met anybody that wanted to be sick. I met a lot of people who were scared. But everyone I ever worked with, whether, either as a massage therapist or as a chaplain's assistant, they came to a place where they focused and gave their energy and their emotion to what they wanted in the remainder of their life. They chose a today 
and worked continuously until their tomorrow arrived. And I saw every single one of them healed. Not cured. Again, please hear that difference. Their disease didn't go away. But they were healed. They spent their todays making the tomorrows what they wanted. It sounds counterintuitive, but our tomorrows happen now. They happen today. In the way that we think, the feelings we pour into those thoughts, it works. I don't know why. I don't care why. I've come to that place where I don't care why it works. It works. It even works when we don't know what we're thinking. When we don't know what we're feeling. And that's the catch. Case in point. A few Sundays ago, there were 72 of us in attendance. That's become fairly average for us, 72. What was not average for that particular day was the offering that came in. It was less than $800 from 22 of us. So if that was our today, my friends, then our tomorrow has arrived. There is a distinct possibility that a lot of our bills and to Reverend Cece will not be paid next week. Now obviously none of us wants that. None of us actively put that out into the universe. <laughs> so I'm asking you for something difficult today. I'm asking you to really work, to really hear me today. Because if you aren't already uncomfortable, give me a minute. <laughs> when I'm out in the garden with the kids, we talk about something that all of us are afraid of, and I'm just going to make that blanket statement. We are all afraid of failure. None of us wants to hear you failed. So when a plant in the garden fails, we put it in the compost pile. And we talk about how sometimes when a plant fails, it just means there's something bigger, or something different for it to do. Instead of what that plant producing the, the flower or the vegetable that it was originally supposed to produce, it's now part of something much more important. Once it breaks down and is transformed, it will now feed all of the plants in the garden and help produce countless number of vegetables and flowers for all of us to enjoy. Failure led to something bigger. We're failing. Here. Together. We're failing. We teach our children about developing their emotional intelligence, and I'd like to engage in that with you now. So please close your eyes. I want you to scan your body. I want you to feel what you're physically feeling. What is tight? Where are you tight? Where are you tense? Where do you feel restricted? We're failing. Now what do you feel and where? Can you name an emotion to this physical feeling? My back is tight. My stomach's churning. I'm afraid. Tune into it and just feel it. You're safe here. Nothing is happening to you. You're choosing what will come through you right now. And letting go of the rest. If you're feeling defensive or angry, 
Please recognize that anger and defensiveness quite commonly comes from deeper feelings of shame. And there is no shame here. My personal mission statement includes that all people will feel safe with me. There is no shame here. There is nothing but opportunity here. If you're thinking that the best thing for us to do is to cut things, why are we paying the band? Why are we paying for janitorial services? Why are we paying for lawn care? What the heck are you here for, Steph? I invite you to look at all those thoughts as merely a symptom. They are a symptom of all of our failing consciousness around money. There is nothing but opportunity here. We just have to be willing to climb into the compost pile together and really examine our thoughts and feelings around abundance. We have to wake up. This isn't just us, by the way. For over a year now, I've been studying two questions. One, why are people leaving the Christian church in numbers never before seen and not coming back? And there are a lot of what I call core theories around that. The one that's most interesting to me, though, is that people don't want to be talked to about God anymore. They want an experience of it. They want an experience of the divine. And so that led me to my second question. If they want an experience of the divine, why aren't they coming here? Why are we in decline, too? Why are we failing as an organization? If this is challenging, this is complex, it can feel frighteningly personal, this can feel like an attack, I understand. It's deep, it's difficult. Our thoughts and feelings around money, it's so built into our culture. Just asking you to stay with me right now. Feel that chair underneath you. Feel what you're feeling and remember that nothing is being done to you. You're choosing what comes through you. And you're letting go of the rest. And what I'm doing right now is working today to build the tomorrow I want and know we are worthy of. Walk through this with me today. Let's walk through this together. I hear a lot of us talking about there's a shift happening here. We're changing, our energy is changing, our energy is shifting. But our abundance consciousness, specifically our thoughts and feelings around money, are obviously not shifting with us. One of our practitioners, Jerry Bloomgold, facilitated a Prosperity Plus class. Four of us took it. And one person doesn't even go here. <laughs> this is the perfect opportunity to change that. This is the perfect opportunity for us, us, us to each look within and ask, what is my part in this failure, and what am I going to do about it? What is in my consciousness that is creating today a tomorrow I might not want or like? You see, I feel we are being called. This Center for Spiritual Living and all Centers for Spiritual Living are being called to step into a breach. A breach that's opened up in our modern society that is far too wide for most religions to span. I believe our philosophy is uniquely qualified to be a voice of healing and mindfulness and wholeness. But we are letting money get in the way. We are letting money get in the way. If you ask a Center for Spiritual Living minister, they will tell you, money is God in action. That's not been my experience during my decade in the organization. We put money above God. 
Worse, we put money outside of God. Have you seen the cartoon? There's a man standing in a river about to be baptized. A preacher has hold of him. The preacher says, everything that's about to go into this water, everything that goes into this water now belongs to God. And in the next frame, you see the man's underwater, except for his left hand, which is holding out his wallet. <laughs> How many of us are holding out our wallet? I've heard others say within the CSL organization, we don't look at conditions. We just look at the spiritual tr truth. Well, the spiritual truth is that God is all there is. There is no lack of limitation within the divine. It is all abundance and it is all freedom. Walk outside our door right here and tell me how many blooms are on that tree out there. Look at the patch of grass below it and tell me how many blades of grass are in that one little patch. God does not know lack or limitation. I absolutely believe that to be true. The contraction being experienced, however, among many CSLs across the world says we probably need to take a step back, a big step back, and take a good look at the thoughts and feelings, what's being done today, that has led us to a tomorrow that is not in alignment with spiritual truth. I told you a little bit ago that I was afraid. I was afraid all any of you were going to hear was blame and shame, and that I was going to get a call on Monday from Reverend CC, <laughs> telling her inbox and her voicemail was full of complaints about me, just what in the heck did I do? <laughs> and did I realize I was never doing this again? <laughs> but the longer I stand up here and feel your energy and see your faces, the less afraid I am and the more excited I am. We're failing. And that's great. <laughs> Look, our society says that it's not true, but I'm telling you it is. I'm telling you there's no better place to be right now than in the compost pile. Because now, together, our sight can be clear. We can see what's restricting us. We can all stare our fear in the face and say, I'm already in a compost pile. What else you got? <laughs> and make no mistake, we are where we are because of fear. I get that. I watch the news. It feels like the world is going insane some days, a lot of days, too many days maybe. This past winter, I wrote a policy and procedure manual for the youth program. And I had to write a procedure for an active shooter in the building. Are you kidding? That was one of the hardest things I have ever done, to have to run through that scenario in my mind and think about our kids and think about these volunteers, all of these people that I love, in that situation. And have to think about that situation from every single angle to make sure I covered every possibility. I get fear. I walk through this very neighborhood four days a week, and sometimes I, I see things, I see flags and signs and bumper stickers or I hear snippets of conversation and I find myself thinking, what is going on? What are these people afraid of? What are we afraid of? We're afraid there isn't enough. We're afraid there isn't Enough, and that is a big, heavy chain built for centuries by more human beings than those that have tried to break it. But we must break it. We must break it in our own minds, if nothing else. The fear that there is not enough money is keeping us from our calling. It is keeping us from freedom in our own lives, 
He's keeping us from healing the societal wounds that says, take before it is taken. I have never, I have never seen a greater opportunity at this center than where we are right now. I feel like this restriction we have around money is the last thing holding us back. We are shifting. We are changing. And it's time to cast off this last anchor. It's time to start consciously building today what we want for tomorrow in our own lives, in the center that we love, in the community we live in, and in the world we're a part of. To my fellow practitioners, I would say, this is the opportunity we've been looking for. We sit in our monthly e meetings and we ask one another, gosh, why don't people want us to pray with them more? Why don't people want to become practitioners? Why don't they realize that we do things beyond Sunday? This is our chance. This is our opportunity to stand up and say, you see this thing I'm wearing? This is my public declaration. This means I am publicly, committed, publicly committing to walking my spiritual path, no matter how difficult it may seem, and that I'm committed to helping you walk yours. I will see the truth when you can't. When I see my beloved community in need or in pain, I will find a way to help it heal. To my fellow practitioners, I think we can stop asking why. And we can start asking, what am I going to do about this? What is my part to play in our healing and growing? Maybe it's another class, a workshop, a talk, a session. But tomorrow, we have been talking about and praying about has arrived. If we aren't able to pay our bills next week, we will have failed. Now, it's not a catastrophic, close our doors kind of fail, thankfully. But it should bring us all up short. Those 22 tithers on that particular Sunday, my name was not on that report. This is the guest speaker's check. Anybody who is not Reverend Cece, who stands up here, gets this check, it's $150. I will tell you that what I was going to do with this $150, next month, no, it's still April, June, my mother turned 70. She loves Alison Krauss. Alison Krauss is playing at the phrase in June. I was gonna take her to that for her 70th birthday using this check to buy the tickets. Where's the nearest tithing basket, please? Thank you, Kathy. I am tithing all of it back to this place that I love because I will not let fear bind me. I don't know how I'm going to get her there, but I'm going to get her there. I will not let fear bind me. So come on. Get into the compost pile with me. Let's churn it all up. Take a good look at our trash. Take a good look at our fear. Grow. Read the books, take the classes, take the workshops, schedule the practitioner session, demand more. We deserve it. We deserve that freedom, we are worthy of it. We are needed. We're being called to something so much greater than what we are now. It's what failure in the compost pile is for. Let us throw off this last chain and enter into our God-ordained place in this world. Let us stand up and be leadership for our community, for our organization, and for this world. Now. Right now. Because right now is the time we have. Thankfully, we have one another. In principle. And we have the ever-expressing example of God all around us and within us.
We have the band come up, please. Will you join me now in consciousness? Will you join me now in taking the first step toward the tomorrow we want? The tomorrow we deserve? So here and now, centered in this place where God is, God is this place in us, as us, through us, with us. God is this place these people, and it is all abundance, it is all generosity, it is all freedom, it is all movement and joy and love. This place is such a blessing, a blessing to those of us who are here, of those of us, of those of us who need here. It is a blessing to our community, it is a blessing in this world. I simply open my heart to it, open my heart to everything that is ours now, our change, our shift, our churning, our transformation. It is all God, and it is all us, and it is all ours. Nothing is kept from us. I claim this joy for us. I claim this bright new day for us. I claim prosperity. I claim love. I claim the blessing, all of the blessings, that is God, that is now us, that was always us, but that we now see. So I just say thank you. I give such, such deep thanks, such great gratitude for everyone who is here, for every individual expression of the one of spirit of God that is here now, becoming clearer by the moment, growing, transforming. So I release this. I just let it go. I let it be. I know it's already in motion. I know it's already done. It already is God. It already is us. When we say together, and so it is.
is Family Sunday, and thank you, Alex, for bringing this up. What I'm holding in my hand is the children's tithe. Since the beginning of this year, our children have been tithing. And so every Family Sunday, they will offer their tithe as well. They are learning how powerful giving is and how much more powerful receiving is. So here we are. Here we are with a new consciousness, a growing consciousness, with an opportunity to step into the tomorrow that we want. Please affirm with me. I know abundance in my life. I know abundance in my life. I know abundance in this center. I know abundance in this center. I give and receive generously. I give and receive generously. And so it is. Sunday will be the circles for, um, we're going to bring the circles back with small group discussions of the topic presented by Reverend Cece, um, direct contact with the infinite. So I guess we'll do those small circle things. Is that me? Sorry, okay. that was God. Okay. <laughs> 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 it just came to Dan. Woo! Okay. So, <laughs> so, is, um, so when you love something like this center, you take an interest in its well-being and health. You are invited to take a greater interest in your spiritual community by participating on the Leadership Council, in the Youth Program, or on the Sunday Service Team. Please consider making even more of a difference here at the Center for Spiritual Living Greater Dayton. We need your wisdom, your vision, and your love. And also, you know, you'll, you'll have more, I don't know, just closer friendships with everybody by doing that. Um, parents, please note next, mark, next month marks the beginning of our gardening program. Every third Sunday, the kids will be outside in the garden, so please make sure that they are dressed appropriately. If any of you would like to donate your time on any of these Sundays, you are warmly invited to do so. Next Saturday, the maintenance team will be reforming. This is another way to serve. If you're handy or want to learn, please call the office. You guys can just come to my house and help maintenance my house. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know you can text or give support to the center? Text the word GIVE to 937-595-0142. That number is in your bulletin, and make it really easy on yourself. Um, okay, so then, Denise, do you want to talk about... Yeah. The, this is Cooking with God events. Yes. I have one event now. Thank you. Thank you. Wine, wine and painting. Yeah, it should be good. All right, good morning, everyone. We are starting our 2018 Cooking with God, and we had a goal set for at least 20 events, and we actually have 21 events, so we reached that goal. Um, so we are also wanting to um, fundraise at least $5,000, so we're hoping that we're kind of on a roll here. We have 21 events, so... Hopefully we can get at least $5,000 earned for our center, along with lots of fellowship and fun for everyone who either hosts or um, joins an event. So, um, today is the first day you can purchase tickets. We are not doing bidding anymore. We're purchasing tickets, so today is the first day, and I think we're going to do 12, uh, 1230. So starting at 12.30, oh, 12, 12, sorry, starting at 12, Clara, myself, and Ann will be available to um, get the tickets from you um, or give the tickets to you and take the money from you. Host, we wanted to let you know that um, you did get your first choice of day unless we contacted you. And also we did a little bit of adjusting of some prices. Um, but I think everything is in the booklet, so hopefully some of you will purchase tickets today to start this off. And then we have um, starting in the office. You can also buy tickets uh, throughout the week if you don't. If you're not able to stay today, you can start buying tickets tomorrow in the office. Are the prices all the same? The ticket prices are not all the same. The ticket prices are based on the event. Lots of wonderful events. I hope all of you sign up for more than one event. Yes. Oh, the tickets we're selling are in the lending library, which is just around the corner to the right. 
just past the social hall, you'll see us. Um, this is a really great uh, catalog of events. Um, we have really fun things like uh, dessert and dreams, and I'm thinking that'd be good for me because I often dream of dessert. <laughs> <laughs> what, does that, what does that mean for you? What is the meaning of that? <laughs> there is no meaning. <laughs> Um, like, uh, we also have, Ken is doing um, something with uh, Not Your Mama's Meatloaf. Can you guys hear me? And uh, Ken is a really good cook, and uh, so he'll be supervising or teaching people with cooking meatloaf that's kind of Italian. It's got yummy cheeses in it, so, and he lives in a cool apartment downtown, so um, it's a chance to, uh, for you to see that as well. So, and then, you know, like Reverend Cece will have... Um, this Thai dinner, and if you haven't been to her place, she's a really fabulous cook. So, um, but otherwise, look them over and sign up. Yeah. You will not regret. This is a um, great opportunity to kind of be prosperous with your entertaining mm -hmm. skills, with your social skills, with your money. It's a win-win all the way around. So please join. Thank yes. you. It'll be fun too. Thank you. <laughs> get that one. Um, there's an introduction to home solar systems um, by Doug. When is that? Doug McQueen. Doug McQueen. Okay, May 6, 12:15 to 1:30 here at the center. So look that one over. I think it's um, it's birthday Sunday. Yes, it is. It's in the end of April. So there is some things back there. I think. Um, that's always good. And well, she's doing that, the, the, the solar one, if anybody's ever curious about solar energy for your home, Doug's an excellent resource, so he'll come and share with you and give you ideas. Okay, these are energy czar. Oh, these energy are energy czar. czar. <laughs> that's always nice. And then, of course, as practitioners, um, we have a prayer box back there. We also have, um, please call us. I think my cell phone number is on here. You can actually text me, and I'll put it on. I'm the one who disseminates all that information um, to all the practitioners. Um, of course, you can see us after church for our one-minute miracle. But I'm trying to think if I left anything out. Read the birthdays. Birthdays. Oh, Nate, read the birthdays. Oh, I'm so sorry. I will read the birthday people. Yes, because there's um, quite a few. Mm -hmm. I think where they are. I don't see them anywhere. Oh, she's looking. You'll also see a flyer in there for <laughs> Life Connections <laughs> Photography. So if anybody's wanting oh, to get pictures okay. of your family, this would be a wonderful oh, opportunity to do that. It'll be in the... Okay. We'll have an overall... Are the names in here? Like, I don't really see it. Yeah, so she's got it. Oh, thank you. <laughs> okay, here we go. <laughs> Kara Boyer, Dean Brust, Joe Casto, Cora Jackson, Denise, oh, sorry, Dennis Moore, um, Judy Nosmacher, Patricia Neff, Kathy Rice, Linda Smith, Sandy Van Fleet, and Carol Weinart. I think I said that right. Anyway, if we haven't had you on there, please contact the office and let them know. What's the date for the photography? I don't see it in here. Carol? Uh, May 31st and June 1st. Oh, oh that's okay. right. I was yeah, I was looking for that too, and I didn't see that in there. I think that's it. All right. I don't have any other things, so please stand. <laughs> I think we're done. Da -da 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 -da. <laughs> so, know with me. Uh, repeat after me. Um, <laughs> I am prosperous. I am prosperous. I live a prosperous life. I live a prosperous life. And I embrace that completely. And I embrace that completely.